Today is the day we're gonna be upgrading this 64 gig Steam Deck to see if it's worth it. So let's go ahead and take it out. Welcome to Mike Text It Out, I'm Mike, and we are gonna be fixing this Steam Deck's biggest problem, that's the 64 gigs slow and small storage. So I ended up deciding to finally pull the trigger and buy an SSD. I looked online for the best prices and it seems like eBay has the most SSDs available for this particular size. I mean the physical size, not the capacity. I ended up getting mine from a Chinese seller for about $65, just $70 now, but it is the 512 gig SK Hynix PCIe Gen 3 SSD. So it's equivalent to the SSDs that they would be putting in the Steam Deck anyway. And of course it did ship from China. So the estimated wait time was October 17th. I got mine in about a week and a half. So the shipping was a lot faster than I expected. But if you do happen to get this one, just expect a long ship time because it is shipping from China. But I got it, it came in new condition. And like I said, it got here pretty fast. So it was pretty well packaged. So everything was good as far as my SSD selection. Now to get to the upgrade portion, I followed iFixit's guide. They partnered with Steam to do the official guides for everything Steam Deck related. The upgrade is pretty simple. There's eight screws in the back. The four inner screws are smaller. So you just take those out with a Phillips head screwdriver. And then there are four outer screws as well that are longer. So you just take those out. From here, that's where you take the back off. Now, iFixit's guide threw me off a little bit because they recommended opening the side and then kind of pulling it up from the side. I was having a hard time with my guitar pick that I had that was really flimsy, getting it into the side and get those clips pried off. So I ended up kind of starting from the top where the plastic's a little bit thinner and I was able to gently pop those clips and then I just worked my way around the sides and around the whole device until I safely popped all the clips. You shouldn't have to use that much force if I was able to do it with like a flimsy guitar pick. It doesn't really take that much force to pop those clips. It's just gonna depend on where you wanna start at. Like I said, for me, it was easier to start towards the top of the device. So once you get in there, the, the next thing you wanna do is remove the thermal shield. And of course, this is my second issue is the foil that is covering one of the screws in the thermal shield. So this is foil tape. And I recommend just buying some extra foil tape in case you mess it up like I did. You have to have a little bit of patience to make sure you don't rip it or have the proper tool. Like in the iFixit guy, they have some tweezers that are kind of flatter on the ends than my tweezers were. So my tweezers didn't work well for it. So I ended up tearing the tape. Foil tape is pretty cheap. They have it at Home Depot for about three bucks. So I do recommend just buying some before doing this upgrade just in case you do tear it. So that way you don't have to worry about waiting to put your Steam Deck back together until you get some or putting it back together and then having to go buy some tape after. So with that out of the way, there's the one screw that was under the foil part that I took out. There are also two other screws at the top and bottom of the thermal cover that are pretty small. So I went ahead and removed those. And from that, the cover should just come right off and we're right there where the SSD is. The other thing you have to do is remove the battery. There is a battery pull tab. I felt a little bit more comfortable just gently nudging it out. And then from there, all we gotta do is just unscrew the one screw that holds in the storage. And of course we have to remove the protective cover from the existing storage. The cover prevents the SSD from interfering with the Wi-Fi module. So it is important to transfer that to your new storage. In the iFixit guide, it recommends opening it up from the back. I was able to just slide mine out, kind of like taking off a sock and slide it onto the new one. So I didn't end up opening it. But it is a little tight. You could just open it from the back and just put it around your new drive. And then from there, you just slot the new one back in, put the one screw back in, reconnect the battery, put your thermal cover back on, put those screws back in, Put your foil back on if you still have it. I ended up doing something really bootleg and putting a piece of aluminum foil up there with some tape, which I'm gonna go back in once I get my foil tape and replace it. So I'm not even gonna show that on camera, nor do I recommend it. I just recommend having some foil tape just in case you need it. And then from there, you just put the back back on. I put the back on, I went around and kind of squeezed it just to make sure all the clips were in place. And then you put the eight screws back in on the back. And that's pretty much it. So the physical part of it really isn't too bad. I think most people can probably do it as a lot easier to be honest than working on most laptops now, especially newer laptops. So overall Valve made it really easy to take this thing apart. Of course, putting the SSD in is the one part of it, but you also need to reinstall the operating system. So luckily Valve has the instructions how to recover SteamOS on their website. So they recommend downloading this program called Rufus. It's basically just to create a bootable flash drive or an SD card if you want to use an SD card. So that way you can reinstall SteamOS kind of similar to what you would do in Windows. So you download that program Rufus and then you download the bootable image as well from their website. And then all you do is just open Rufus. You just gotta select the bootable image, select the drive that you wanna 
install that image on and it just takes care of everything for you. So after that's done, you just boot into recovery mode by holding the volume down and pressing the power button. Once you hear the chime, you let the button go and then they'll bring you to the boot selector and then you just select your drive to boot from. And then from there, it should have been easy, but it wasn't. Of course, I had to run into trouble. So if you saw my first impressions video of the Steam Deck, I mentioned how horrible the Steam Deck was with that slower SD card that I had before my SD card came in because it arrived late. Apparently the slow storage thing also pertains to installing SteamOS in general. My original drive, it was an older USB 2.0 drive. Now I've used this to install thousands of copies, not thousands, but I've used this to install Windows plenty of times, including Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11. It's a little slow, but it'll install those just fine. I've also installed Linux with it, but SteamOS was a no-go. I sat there for about an hour with the black screen and it was just not going. So I ended up using a newer Gen 3 flash drive. It was still a cheap drive, so it's not like it was a great drive. I don't want anybody to mistake this for a great drive, but I used a newer one that was Gen 3, and it still did the same thing. It was still super slow. It did eventually, after about 30 minutes, get to the desktop, but it was running so slow that I really couldn't do anything on it. So finally, I went to Reddit, and I saw other people having this issue, and someone was like, basically get a better drive or use a micro SD card. I had to wipe my micro SD card. I was trying not to because I still had games installed up there. I didn't feel like reinstalling, but I ended up wiping it and using that instead. And that worked flawlessly. Within like 20 minutes, I'd say I was back and running Steam OS. Once you boot from the bootable device, it's supposed to take you to the desktop environment and you can just select to reinstall Steam OS. And there's like two prompts that pop up that you hit yes on and it takes care of the rest for you. And then you just set it up like you're the first day you got the Steam Deck. So aside from a few bumps, it's a pretty straightforward process. Of course, the first thing I did was go and confirm that I had the storage and sure enough, it showed up about 460 gigs. It's awesome and it saved a lot of money in comparison to buying the 512 gig, which is $250 more than the base model. I spent $65 and got the same storage. Of course, I don't have the etched screen, but even if you look at the 256 gig model, which doesn't have the etched screen, it's still $129 more than the base model. So it's even cheaper than just buying the 256 gig outright. From a price perspective, it's definitely worth it. And it's also worth it from a performance perspective. One of the things I noticed and I mentioned it in my Steam Deck versus GPD Win 3 video was how bad the desktop performance is on the 64 gig Steam Deck. Not that I tried a Steam Deck with an SSD before this, but I know enough about operating systems to know that if you have slow storage, that means the operating system is gonna be slow. Now Valve does a good job of optimizing it in the main Steam OS mode, but when you switch to desktop mode, you definitely felt the slowness. Even switching to desktop mode took a long time in comparison to the new one, which literally took seconds. I was like, okay, this is how it's supposed to be. And then opening applications for the first time in desktop mode took forever. Like I opened Chrome and I thought maybe it crashed or something. So I ended up trying to open Edge and then they, it just went open. So I waited about a minute and then finally Chrome opened and then finally Edge opened. And of course, if you open it again, then it'll open faster because it's already stored in a RAM. But the initial load, when it has to load things off of the disk, that slow storage, that's where it's gonna count the most, especially in desktop mode. Whereas when I have the 512 gig one, I literally load in the Steam OS. I can start opening stuff immediately. I open Chrome, it just opens right up. I open Steam up, it's just instantaneous. And then of course, there's the other thing like file transfer speeds. I transferred the same file from my micro SD card to the desktop. It took about two or three minutes to transfer this four gig ROM for the 64 gig. And it took about 30 seconds with the SSD. So overall, it's not really gonna affect game performance as much. It's really gonna be the most noticeable when you're in that desktop mode. Even though I do feel like Steam OS is just a bit snappier than before, like sleep and wakes to touch faster, but it's not really a big difference. The biggest difference is gonna be in desktop mode, of course your transfer speeds if you're transferring files. And then also, of course, you just have a lot more storage internally. You don't have to worry as much about installing stuff on the internal drive by accident and running out of space because you barely had enough space to begin with. Also before I had to point everything to the SD card and in Steam, that's fine, it works seamlessly, but outside of Steam, like when I install the Epic Game Store or when I install emulators, you always have to do a little bit extra to get permission to access that external storage. So from that perspective, it'll be a little bit easier as well. You can actually put stuff on the internal storage. So for the most part, I'd say it's worth the upgrade. If you're just playing a few games with SteamOS and using it casually, you're probably fine with the micro SD card, but if you wanna do anything that involves the desktop mode or even installing emulators or using the internal storage for anything else other than just SteamOS, I definitely recommend doing this upgrade. It's worth it and it's really not an expensive upgrade and it's not too difficult either. But that's gonna bring this video to a conclusion. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you've upgraded your Steam Deck at all. And I'm bringing it home, but if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to tell a friend, tell a coworker, like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell notification to be notified when I drop a video. And I always do at least two things at the same time. Peace.